now Set that seal again upon my forehead, the seal of dominion over the affairs of my life, the seal of dominion in my place of endeavor. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Shiloh 2018. And I take dominion. Shiloh 2018. And I take dominion. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be comfortably seated. We've gone through the dominion power of servanthood. The dominion power of prayer and fasting, the dominion power of meekness. I mean, all that means whosoever is interested in his heritage of dominion must make these virtues and demands his lifestyle. Let me lend the word to my co-liberals in the vineyard. No ministry will be greater than the set man is to serve the people. There is no method. There is no way you are not out to serve the people it will place a limit on the growth of your ministry um among you jesus said like we are told as he that serves and today two thousands of human people human race on the earth gather at his feet No ministry will ever be sustainable in growth. We ever sustain growth without a growing heart to serve. A growing heart to serve. And the same applies to all other areas of endeavor. A commitment to serving is what changes our level of authority. Blessed is that servant whom is Lord when a commerce shall find those so doing, he shall put him over all things. Blessed is that servant whom is Lord when a commerce shall very I said we shall make him ruler, ruler over all his goods, over all his goods. It's also important to know that because a great door is opened unto you, but there are many adversaries that are out to block your access to those great open doors. The gates of hell are out to shut you and me out of our inheritance. And some kind will never go except by prayer and fasting. So prayer and fasting is not... Uh, a religious activity is a weapon of war for clearing off every satanic barriers on the path of your destiny. That's so important. And the greatest concern of the devil is the growth of the church. So there is no pastor under heaven make a headway in growth without prayer and fasting. There is no church that does not subscribe to the demand of prayer and fasting that will see genuine growth, stable growth. 
mechanize growth. There was a business here that was dying and one of our precious sons was there in NYC and he told them, he said, look, that's what we do in our church to scatter whatever is not working. Pray and fasting. Can we fast for three days in this organization? Because the head of the organization is a believer. So, we went to three days of prayer and fasting. The heaven was open. Many have eaten up their destiny. They are barely as eating up their destiny. Barely eating up them. It's so vital. He said, when thou fastest, not if you fast. It's supposed to be a part and part of our adventure. When thou fastest, when thou prayest, when thou fastest, when thou prayest, when thou prayest, Matthew 6, 6, when thou fastest, Matthew 6, 17. So he said, when matter, not an if matter. I don't like fasting. You don't have to like it. The devil is happy that you don't like it. So he can block your access finally to your inheritance. And rob you of the best of life. You don't have to like it. You know what Paul said? In fasting is awful. In what? In fasting is awful. In fasting is awful. Second Corinthians 11 27. In fasting is awful. And you know, we are all redeemed as priests and kings to reign on the earth. No fasting. I, 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 I used to follow my grandmother to the market in those days. Anytime there was no school. And then you find some goats. They are out to eat because it's market day also for them. So they go to the woman selling gari and, and then they hit the thing. It goes small, small. It comes back again. They break the leg. He drags the leg back there. You know, this is a comeback devil. He goes and comes. He goes and comes. In fact, the Bible said about Jesus, he left him for a season. He left him for how long? He said, I'm coming back. Don't think I've gone. I'm coming back. And then, at the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said, this is your hour and the power of darkness. He came. Came there. So you place a check on the advancement of the devil in your area. You secure your territory through the weapon of prayer and fasting. Because the combined forces of faith, prayer and fasting, we deal with anything where you're coming from. He said, this kind the last kind. We by prayer and fasting. Remember I said about 20 years, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, most of you can't anything. However, this kind will require that to couple your faith. Prayer. Three days of prayer and fasting open up the destiny of our church. Three days of what? Prayer and fasting opened up the destiny of this church only four people myself and three others stood in the place of prayer and god down, sir. god came down and obeyed the mercy of continuing on any church growth thank you jesus so if we didn't do it who we'll stay be at ee e. ramat close and guari make aduna and be saying fear not little flock it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is the 38th year of this church, and we thank God. All those churches that are growing, they are not teaching the real world. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. Yes. Every time you beat this up, how can you say about right? I said it's about right now. For cheap. For cheap. Selling it for cheap. Because they are barely won't let them enter their promised land. Their belly, their belly, their belly. You know what Kenneth Hagin said? He has never sought God for more than three days on any issue without an answer. Three days fasting can start that month. But now you are fasting and go on. Even in church, except in this church, if I see you choose something, you'll be as communicated straight. Because it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make you responsible. Can you be chewing in court? You're too here. Ah, yeah. You won't try anyway. You won't. If my eye catch you, even on the camera. 
I will ask them to pick you up because that is a disrespect to my God. It's a dishonor to my father. Can you come to my small table, my own small table? I mean, you think I will listen to you? Excuse me, please move. Move. Don't do nonsense here. You know, there is a sense of dignity that follows your worship. You must learn to honor Jesus, reverence him. In case you do that, where you come from, and with it, it's not a deal to secure your place in God. God is against the proud, but He gives more grace to the humble. Moses was very meek, and Exodus 11:3, he was very great. That means meekness, like we are told, is what defines our level of greatness or level of authority. We won't miss it. This morning, I'll be sharing with us for the few minutes we have on the dominion power of vision unveiling the dominion power of vision we are in the last days and we are in the days of, of visions and revelations of the lord we are in the last days and we are in the days of visions and revelations of the lord but it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dream. And your young men shall see visions. We are in the days of visions and revelations of the Lord. Paul said, and we come to the visions and revelations of the Lord. We are in those days now. We are God will be by the unveiling of his plan leading his people into their realms of dominion. So important. By vision, Abraham secured his place of dominion. The Lord appeared to him, get thee out of thy country. I'm taking you to where I will make you great and your name very great. And in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And so by vision. Abraham stepped into his realms of dominion. By vision, his son Isaac stepped into the realm of dominion. Thou shalt not go down to Egypt, abide in this land. Amen. And he did. And in this land, and within one year, he went forward, he was great, became very great. Philistines envied him. Genesis 26 verse 1 and then verse 12 to 14 and the Philistines envied him and the Philistines envied him he assessed his realm of dominion by vision there was this young man called Gideon the Lord appeared to him and by vision he became the captain of the host of the Lord, the sword of Gideon, the sword of the Lord, and the sword of Gideon. He came from the least family, the least tribe in Israel. And his father's house was the least house in that house, and it was the least in his father's house. But by vision, he stepped into his realm of dominion. And we brethren as Isaac, we are the children of promise. Galatians 4, 28. <laughs> and if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and he has according to the promise. And so we are children of Abraham and we must engage after the order of the steps of Abraham. Vision is the gateway to our realm of dominion. Vision is the gateway to our realm of dominion. For who is he that says and it cometh to pass when the Lord commanded it not? This is very important. This is very crucial. There are too many trial by error steps people are taking today in the body of Christ. And that is robbing them of their place of dominion. 1 Corinthians 7 20. <laughs> it said, Let every man abide in the same calling. We are in his call. Everyone 
stay where you belong. We saw a picture of this unbeatable army of men of dominion in Joel chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. And we saw the mystery behind their dominion on the earth. Let's start from Verse 2 1 the trumpet in Zion, I stand an alarm upon my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord coming, and it is nigh at hand. That's talking about the last day a day of darkness and dominion, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong arose. There has not been ever like the like. And neither shall there be any more after them, even to the years of many generations. These are transgenerational giants. Amen. People whose empire will be spoken of in generations after them. Now, let's watch. A fire devoured before them. That's power. And behind them a flame burning. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. They will be men of dominion, irresistible, unquestionable. Now, what next? The appearance of them is the appearance of horses. Men of unusual strength and vigor. There will be no feeble person in the church this end time. I said there will be no feeble person among church members. Sickness and disease will become a stranger to the body of Christ. Yeah. We'll come back to the days of the apostles. Don't upon the elders. Don't be for them in the they won't be needed because they are not there. They are not there. Are you sick? Call on one of the elders that he should come and minister to you. Amen. That's the day we are coming into. Men like horses. Men like horsemen. Upon the mountain. Men, men like not, not, it's not waking up in the morning after six hours of sleep and yawning. Ah, I'm tired. What time? Name. When did you wake up? Six o'clock or seven. <sighs> Early morning. But like horsemen, so shall they run. Go ahead. And as the fire devoured the stubble, as a strong people said, the battle in array. Now, go ahead. Like the noise of the chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap? Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble, as a strong people said, the battle in array. Like, I mean, before their face, the people shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. Now, like mighty men, they like men of war, and they Catch everyone on their ways, and they shall not break. Their, they will just be on their path. Yeah. Sir. They are not going for what is popular. They are going for what the plan of God is for them. They are not fighting anybody, and they are not competing with anybody. They have their natural goodwill to everyone on their own respective path. Now verse 8 repeated the same thing. He said, neither shall one thrust another. They shall run everyone in his, they shall walk everyone in his path. And when they shall fall upon the wall, or when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. By many on their path, they become indestructible. Vision makes you indestructible. I'm doing what God told me to do. Uh, attempting to destroy me will backfire because of the backing of the one who told me to do it. Amen. When I told them in this country, 2015, you are heading for trouble. <laughs> Everybody saw the trouble. One of them said to me, he said, if we saw what we saw, we won't do what we did. They saw it. God told me what will happen. And I will soon tell you what's about to happen. Amen. You know, I'm one of God's confidants. 
on this continent today. He tells me what it is. Don't let no political person be bragging. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. God gives you my wings. You can't get it by any cabal. Tell you that. If God wants to, you can't be there. You'll be flattened. Who support you have? Thank you, Jesus. They are the voice of conscience for the nations. Genuine prophets don't take nothing from nobody. Don't take nothing from what do you can. Thank you, Jesus. Vision is the gateway to the realms of dominion of the saints. The Lord spoke to me many years ago from Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, the thought of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. I know the end from the beginning. But I was reading down from the reverse standard version. You hear what he said? For I know the plans that I have for you, said the Lord. The plan of welfare and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. So our future is in his plan for us, <laughs> not in our plan, in his plan for us. So access to his plan secures our future. Access to his plan and following his plan secures our future. If I start from what he asked me to do today, see how empty a man can be. If you ever hear in your life that I took a ballot box running for an office, know that I've missed God. That is not his plan for my life. And I've never spoken for any party in my life, neither will I do till I die. Nobody has ever asked me to speak for them. They know what I will say. You will lose your shoes there. There are prophets of men and there are prophets of God. Ahab had his prophets. You know what Elisha said? Go to the prophets of your father and your mother. What are you coming here to do? But there are prophets of God who are the mouthpiece of God and don't fear no devil as they discharge their duty. Thank you, Jesus. Prophets don't compare notes. They operate absolutely by those say the Lord. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But it's our keeps the law, the vision of God for his life, happy is he. You won't lose your place in destiny. Yeah. Say with me, my future is in God's plan. And God's plan is unveiled by visions and revelations. By visions and revelations. God's plan is unveiled by visions and revelations. Every plan of God is God's commandment for that individual. Every vision is God's commandment. And we see that since and past when the Lord commanded in God. Lamentation 3, verse 37.
It's important for me to mention here that visions and revelations carry same potency. The vision of all is as a book that is written. The words of a book that is sealed and men deliver it to one that is learning. Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot for it is sealed. So the vision of all is in the book of God. Come and say the book of God. So <laughs> our revelation of the book equals vision two there are spectacular appearances that delivers god's plan to people that's what most of us call visions but beyond that there are the revelations of the world that unveils god's plan as it relates to you can i hear your amen, amen. so we are in the days of visions and revelations of the world that shows us where we belong in Christ. I didn't have a spectacular vision of prosperity. I had a revelation of prosperity that repositioned my life for heaven's abundance. It's touching the world. I didn't have a spectacular revelation on Matthew 6 at the 3. I had a revelation of the world that shows me how to secure my destiny without stress. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things that others are dying to get, they shall be added to you. Now, I mean, that is not any less in potency than the 18 hour vision. Glory to God. This is so important. If you are not running with a vision in this end time, you are not a candidate for dominion. You are not a candidate for you are not a if whatever comes to your mind, come to your mind, whatever you think is the order of the day. If you come to do what somebody else is doing, yeah, you be, you run out of fuel in no time, sir. Because the backing required to keep you going will not be there not be there visions and revelations of the law now why this may come to us on their own many times we go to make demand for the plan of God for our life. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I want to see what he will say to me. And what I will answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord said what? Write the vision. We can demand for the plan and purpose of God for our life on the prayer altar. Can I hear your amen? Make it plain. I run with it. For the vision is an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Do it tarry, wait for it, for it shall surely come to pass. It shall not tarry. So we can stand upon our watch and set ourselves upon the tower to watch out for God's plan for our life on any particular issue of interest. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will guide thy steps. Glory to God. We, make, we can make demand for it. Spectacular visions happen at his own instance. But when you are in search of the plan of God concerning any step of your life, go ahead and make demand for it. Go ahead and make demand for it. This is so important. My confidence is this. Sir. I am in the center of the center of the center of God's plan for my life. 
I'm doing just what God has told me to do. That's where my confidence lies. My confidence is so deep rooted in the consciousness that I'm in the center of the center of the plan of God for my life. I want you to have that. If they gave me a White House appointment in 1984, I won't take it. I once told the president here in this country, I said, what appointment do you think you can give me that I would consider? He said, no. The appointment I have, because I know the worth of it. I know the worth of obeying God. I pray no one here will miss God. So I have an error costly now, sir can be most frustrating. I will pour my spirit upon men, all men, and they shall begin to see vision. Come living wonders on the earth. We can make demand for it. How do I know when I'm in line with God's plan for my life? First Thessalonians and verse 19 to 21 quench not the spirit the spirit of God is still moving on the earth today despise not prophesying don't despise any word that may come from heaven in your direction but prove all things and hold the past which is truth so there must be ways whether we received is from the Lord or not. Whatever sees you, number one, is not from God. <laughs> is it now I go bound in the spirit? Unto Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me. That was Paul's testimony. Last that the Spirit of God says in every place that there are chains and bands that await me there. When whatever stresses your spirit is not from God. For wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. There is liberty. There is liberty. If it is the Spirit of God, there is liberty in your spirit. Your spirit man is relaxed. You are not tensed up. This is so important. You are not tensed up. Nothing here has tensed me once. Test me up once. No? I can it slow until I hear from God. When I hear from God, nobody, no devil. Beware of self-inflicted tension. If it is God, he relaxes you. He doesn't tense you up. If it is God, He relaxes you. He does not tense you up. Now I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing. Behold, I go bound in the spirit of Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city I go to, saying that bands and fish shall be abide in me. So I'm tense. That's where Paul will have checked out. Now, let me tell you the story of Paul. He that is mighty through Peter to the apostleship of the circumcised, the same is mighty through me to the apostleship of the Gentiles. That was where his dominion was. He left his place of dominion to his place of humiliation. 
just left. The Holy Ghost was checking. Don't go, don't go, don't go. I'm going. It's on my shadow. I'm a man of my word. Then he became a man under house arrest. Till his last days. Maybe what I want to thank God for is that he wrote all those letters there. <laughs> okay? But, but his realm in Galatians 2 8 was among the Gentiles. Can I tell you this, sir? If this ministry had moved out of God's plan into Togo, it would have lost its place. You just have where you are to be based. You must locate where and settle down there. Can I hear your amen? amen. God is no respect of persons. You won't leave your realm of dominion to your realm of humiliation. to check before jumping from pillar to post and from frying pan to fire check 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 he was tensed up at 2022 if he saw this i think that's why he wrote we are the spirit of god is there is liberty Number two on your checklist, the book of Psalms 85 and verse 8. I will hear what the Lord will say to me and what I will answer. What, what the Lord will say to me, what the Lord will say. For the Lord will speak peace unto his people. What does God speak? But let them not turn again unto food. The Lord will tell, speak peace to his people and to his saints. He will speak peace from heaven. Comes on peace. If there is no noticeable peace, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Peace like a river. Peace that is not circumstantial. Peace. Peace for the Lord we speak peace. That's how we found this place. The peace of God was so dominant in the forest. So dominant. And I would say to the people, I just feel God here. There was no single building, there was no single life, but the peace of God was so strong. The Lord we speak peace. All our ways are ways of pleasantness, and all our paths are peace. Remember, wisdom is profitable to direct. So when it's a direction from the Lord, all our ways are ways of pleasantness, and all our paths are peace. I felt the peace of God so strong, that I will be walking through this forest in the night alone. And, and as if you are walking in a palace. The peace of God was so evident and so strong. Check it. Not that uh, another man has confirmed it. There is no confirmation of anybody that would be the confirmation of the world. I've never had anybody confirm what God told me before. God confirms it by biblical proofs. There are some people, if they walk for the next 50 years, they won't see dominion. They are off their path. They are completely off. And many are too proud to make a U-turn. Too proud. Some have left their job without any idea of what next. Now they can't feed their family. No, I never, I never went away. Okay, leave without food today. Who is getting what? Who is losing what? Thank you, Jesus. If you see tension, 
watch it. You don't have the peace of God solid in your heart. Hold it. Number three. God's plan will always be accompanied by his might, his strength. Have not I sent thee? Go in this thy might. Judges 6 and verse 14. Every vision imbues the visionary with divine strength to run. Divine strength to run. They came and said, Even devils have stopped you to us in your name. He said, No, I gave you power. When I sent you, my power accompanied you. <laughs> so his power accompanies the saint. You can't wear him out. Is full of divine strength. Walking in God's plan is walking in dominion. I've not sent these prophets here, they run. Not everybody that is running is sent. Some just choose which direction to run to. They start their running. Something happened years ago in our commission. We sent to a particular place outside the country because we have some members of our church in Kaduna who are from that city. And they began to press, we need this job, we need this job. So we sent people there. And we labored there for six years without any imprint. How many years? I said, Jesus, why is nothing happening here? He said, I am not there. Hello? And you know me for how I respond. I called them, pack your luggage now and start coming. God said, it's not there. God said, it's not there. No matter how strong, when this gospel plan. You have lost your place in destiny. You, you can't fall to say, I say what I say. The people led us there, not God. And every effort there didn't produce any result. I went to that place three times myself. I don't go to any place. And we are starting a church. Eh? We went one time with 19 people. It's all kind of miracles. We couldn't find a place to buy, a place to rent. No. God said, I am not there. When I go to where they were worshiping, I said, My, this is not this commission. <laughs> After six years, some can waste their entire life like that. Just being somewhere where God is not. When God sends, He goes with the saint. Lord, I'm with you always. When God sends, he goes before the sand to make the quicker pass straight. He goes before the sand. He goes before. Behold, I send my angel to go before you. He shall keep you and bring to the place that I've appointed you. 23 of Exodus and verse 20. When God sends, he walks with the sand. God was walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. When God says, He walks through the sand. God is at work in you, both to do and to both to we and to do of His good pleasure. Philippians 2 12. 2 13. It is God that walketh in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. 
When God sends, you know what he did? He walks for the send. Faith is it has called you, who called you, will also do it. That's why visionaries are marvels. Because every doing of God is marvelous. God is just walking the walk and they fronting for God. Visionaries only front for God. You know what Jesus said? My father doeth the work. My father, we let a man doeth the work. John 10, well, John 14, 10. My father doeth the work. My father doeth the work. My father. That realm that vision brings people to. God is just walking the walk. People think you are the one and they are clapping for you. You are only fronting for the you are just fronting for Jehovah God. That's what vision does. That's what vision does. Somebody asked me years ago, he said, how do you feel when you drive through this campus? I said, I feel God. What do I feel? See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. I just see what God has done. After God completed this sanctuary, the pastors met, and I said, hello, if anybody ever went around this building and said we beauty god we kill him because we had no power no might at all at all to die it. how much less how much more to accomplish it that's the wonder of vision it's from the platform 1998 september 17 and god by september 8 1989, we dedicated. How? How? Don't ask me how. <laughs> I am God. I will walk and we shall let it. When I search for my hand, we shall turn it back. So, September, I was hearing it the same time you were hearing it. The same time. He was saying, say it. Say it. He was saying it through me. <laughs> I was saying, because you know, I may not believe it if I get out of that place. I was saying it. I was, and we stepped here on the 18th, started drawing the rope. They said the plan is not ready. They said, no, it will be ready as we go. It's the foundation plan, right? Yes. yes. And he did. That's the marvel of following God's plan. Can I hear your amen? amen. You will not suffer any more setback in your life. Amen. It's good to know the times and the seasons of God. We are in the last days. We are in the days of visions and revelations of the Lord. You won't miss it. Well, let's come down to everybody's level. You want to take any step, check up with God. Check up with God. Father, this is the business somebody brought to me. Is it the right way to go? Tianos Kanarosa. You pray, you can't get it. Put three days fasting and prayer because it may destroy all your resources in life. One wrong step can wreck your whole destiny. Cross check with God. Don't wait for 18 hour vision. Cross check with God. Check with God at every point of your life. Cross check with God. I say, Jesus, what are you saying concerning this land? This is the place. I know you don't like it, but this is the place. You No transportation taking place. No, way. this is the place. Far away from everywhere, robbers having a feed day on the highway. This is the place. Devils are plenty here. This is the place. Brutal witches. This is the place. <laughs> Merciless devils. This is the place. And is it not the place today? Please cross check with God. Cross check with God. He knows the end from the beginning. Cross check with God. Every major step of your life. Cross check with God. Cross check with God. Cross check. I will hear what the Lord will speak unto me. And what I will answer when I'm questioned. And the Lord said, this is my plan. Only those who ask receive. Only those who find, only those who knock, how the doors open. And let me finally close.
God's presence steers joy. In his presence is fullness of joy on his right hand of pleasures evermore. Vision secures God's presence with the visionary. Joy unspeakable is part of the proofs of a true vision. Not up today, down tomorrow, up next tomorrow. Can I tell you something? I've never had my head cast down once. Why am I doing this? She was like you, Kojubai. Is this trouble not much now? I'm enjoying the troubles. Why you think that people attack me? I'm enjoying it. And I didn't even hear. <laughs> if I hear, don't do anything. Because I want to, you when no man shall speak well of you. I got that from God myself. So when you are speaking ill of me, I just know that I'm on course. <laughs> just be sure I'm not doing what you are saying. I'm simply on course. I was a lone voice in this country, 2015. Every agent was washing their mouth, but well, now they have gone into hiding. Everything I told them has happened. You are voting for crisis. Did they not have crisis? Killing innocent people. Organized by those people in power. I told this country, I said, there is no full of that has to buy AK-47. I know how much a cow costs to buy a cow. So, how many cows will you sell to buy AK-47? They power them to kill people. And when the wicked rule, is there no money on the street? Many are jobless today. Of agencies have fled the country. Wicked policies. But I told you, every time I saw it, I told you before. You tell me it's for you. You don't know who's experience to be a prophet. You are surprised to Amen. Amen. You can't train to be a prophet. Though. You are either called to be one or you are not one. Just quote a prophet. Don't do as if you are one. Amen. Otherwise, we'll be start telling something later. Glory to God. Well, as for you, you won't miss place in God's land. Everybody stand up to your feet. Give the Lord a shout of victory. Give the Lord a shout of victory. Clap your hands, all oh ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Amen. No more waste of energy. No more dissipation of strength. The humility required to cross check with God before taking any step in your life. Come on now, begin to receive that. Begin to receive that. Begin to receive that. Before you leave this mountain, God is directing your steps. He's directing your steps. He's moving on you in the name of Jesus. Come on now, lift up your two hands and thank God, your great shepherd. Would you thank him? He's your great shepherd. He's my great shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. In Jesus' 
precious name. The Bible says, and the task of God, he led them through the desert. He caused the waters to flow out for, from the rock for them. He cleaved the rock also, and the waters gushed out. No matter how harsh the environment, when you are following God's plan, you will not thirst. You are following God's plan, you will not want. You are following God's plan, you will never be granted. Thank you, Jesus. They thirsted. Vision made the great man Moses. They thirsted. He confronted Pharaoh with his life in his hand. Untouchable. No attempt was ever made to arrest him. Unmolestable. No assault was meted on him. He dominated the whole of Egypt. As one old boy. The whole of Egypt was at a standstill. Pharaoh, stop! How long will you be stubborn? Old man. Tomorrow, you will see flies in your bedroom. I say so. <laughs> um, you know, God appeared to him. This God will appear to you. And I will send you to Pharaoh. Yes. Can I tell you something? God sent me to this world. I am not qualified. Can I? All oh, ministers of the gospel, please listen to me. You are called because you are weak. Yes, ah. yes, yes. You better understand that. You are called because you are not wise. He says, See your calling. How oh, not many wise men are called? Not many strong men are called. I don't know where your pride is coming from. If you read the Bible, your calling is on the basis of your weakness. <laughs> Amen. So that no flesh will glory in his presence. That's what you are called. First Corinthians, you must read it when you get home today. First Corinthians 1, 26 to 31. You must, your calling is on the basis of your weakness. Okay, where is your pride? He gave you the word you are preaching. Amen. Amen. Abba. Now it reminds you what to say when you forget because you are not that strong. <laughs> it says it will remind you of all things that you have heard from me. Now his virtue is the one that flows to heal the people, not your virtue. So so where is your where is the pride from? That applies to all of us. No one will abuse this privilege. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever man of God has for direction on this mountain, highly on. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. So shall it be. Everybody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Celebrate him, magnify him, his Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The specialized classes are as potent as the professions. Areas that involve you in their hand. The word of God is the rod of God. Nobody will return from here rodless. That was the rod of dominion in the hand of Moses. Everybody here will be returning with the rod of dominion. Thou shalt take. I won't take. You have to take. Everybody has to take. Has anybody taken anything since we came? Thou shalt take. The Lord sent a word into Jacob. He turned him to a nation. Thou shalt take. 
and it shall turn and change your level and give you a place of dominion on earth thou shall take help me to take it not just here thunders well preaching powerful preaching shall take shall take in the name of jesus yes things have happened since we came but how much has happened to you what have you held what have you been able to lay hold upon hold upon somebody had a word of hope and then got his war from the blessing and three of the eight children or eight sons and daughters were married in one year the others will be married this coming year because the word of god liveth and abideth forever in the name of jesus as your word strikes you won't miss it and as you take it your dominion will be established give the lord a big hand get seated please I don't have any doubt that some people here have laid hold on definite rods in the three teachings that have gone forth this morning. The Lord will appear to you again by his word now. And the Lord appeared again unto Samuel at Shiloh. For the Lord appeared unto Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord God just shows up from his word for in the beginning was the word the word was the God and the word was God God showing up from his word here am I and this is what to do amen here am I and this is what to do how many are set for another appearance now <coughs> You have it. Yeah. You have it. Yeah. You have it. Yeah. Now, we'll be looking at the subject unveiling the dominion power of dedication. The dominion power of dedication. Let me start with a very simple illustration. Every child of God is a spiritual seed. Spiritual seed. No matter the quality of a seed, until it's dedicated to the earth, it will abide alone. Remember Jesus said, and let's get it from scriptural background. The hour to glorify the Son of Man. The hour that the Son of Man should be glorified is come. But except a corn of wheat referring to himself falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, if it chooses to, dedicate itself to the earth and dies then it brings forth much fruit and from one seed will emerge a plantation and from a plantation will emerge industries <laughs> and will be spreading its tentacles around the world so our adventure into glory begins with dedication. Remember the father sent me, so send I you. So he sent him as seed. And so we are also sent as seed. Galatians 3, 29. If ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. So 
every child of God is a spiritual seed and its actual value is in being planted in God and its cause on the earth. Amen. No one took it away from me, so nobody can dedicate you to God. You dedicate yourself. No one took it from me. I laid it down by myself. I have power to lay down and I have power to take it again. So dedication is a personal decision. Dedication to God and to the advancement of his kingdom is a personal decision. John 10, 17 and 18. No one took it away from me. Took it from me. I laid it down of my own. I have power to lay down. The power to choose to be dedicated is available with you. But the choice is yours to make. No devil can stop the distinction of a genuinely dedicated soul to God. The scriptures cannot be broken. <laughs> no devil, no gang up of hell can stop it. This is so vital, this is so crucial. So, dedication is at the root of dominion. Jesus, the dedicated seed of God, is still ruling the world today. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Abandoned data shows two thirds of human population follow the seed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Today, every name bows to the seed. Hmm. Of things in heaven, of things in heart, of things underneath the heaven. That is the explosive future that awaits truly dedicated souls to God. No matter where anybody may be, I had no bank account in my life in 1976 when I sold out to Jesus. When I signed a pact to make him my reason for living. When I got my wife when she to sign if she believed in this madness. And the document was signed. September 12, 1976. We were in the church. There was no service going on. We sat on the back row. God was witness. And she signed up with the date. I wrote it in the night. I called her in the day. Come, let's meet at the church. They opened the church. We entered. There was no life there except God. For the Lord has chose, chosen Zion. That's that for his habitation. This is my rest forever. God is always in church. Amen. And so we signed that part. From a tiny seed, less than a mustard seed. Mark chapter 4, verse 30 to verse 33. And he said, we are on to. Shall we like it, the kingdom of God? Or what? Or with what? Comparison, shall we compare it? He said, it is like a grain of mustard seed. Which is? Which when it is sown, when it is sown, not until it is sown. Which when it is sown, 
in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up. When it is sown, not when he has prayed, when it is sown, well, not when he has fasted. When it is so praying and fasting over a seed won't change the status. Yeah, yeah. Now, this seed you must grow. This seed, hallelujah, you must grow. You must become a huge harvest. This seed you must grow. And you are fasting and you are praying. You are wasting your energy. You are playing religion. No seed grows without being planted. No destiny blossoms without being dedicated to Jesus. No destiny will ever command dominion without being dedicated in truth and in deed to Jesus. It grew it up and become Shoot it up, great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Amen. That the human race lodging under your shadow as a product of your dedication to Christ. <laughs> God has something to say. God has something to say. I will listen and pay full attention. For God has something to say. My worries died when I sold out to Jesus. <laughs> Anxieties died. I have never knocked on anybody's door in my life. Can you help me? Whatever God can give me, I don't need. Whatever God, my God can do, let it be undone. Wherever my God can take me, let me never get there. That has ruled my life from September 12, 1976. There is no amount of support that can turn a seed to a harvest until it's sown. Because most of us want to take a, we want to hide in the midst of, you know, I have so many people that are supporting me. If you don't have God's support, you don't have no support. But God won't support anybody outside his world. You don't want to abide alone and live a solo life. You want to be a covering to many for their good. Be dedicated. That is the message of Mark chapter 4 verse 10 to 33. Be dedicated to God. It is the foundation of your dominion so let this mind be in you philippians 2 verse 5 which also was in christ although it was in the form of god but he counted not of it to be equal with god but made himself of no reputation took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and what and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things underneath the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father he became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore on the basis of his uncheckered dedication, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name. It is God who gives names. 
Amen. It's God who gives names. Do you know there are presidents of nations that have no name? There are presidents of nations that have no name. Praise God. Outside their little country, nobody knows. If you meet him at the airport, he will have to introduce himself. Is God, he said, and I will make of thee a great name. Is God who makes names? Who makes names? It's God. It's not ballot box. It's God who makes names. 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 And he will only name the dedicated. He named Jesus based on his dedication to him as his father. Dedication to his mandate on the earth. Let's stop playing games, my friend. Dedication is a mystery of the kingdom that confers dominion. Dedication, I define it as a deadly commitment to God. And to the advancement of his kingdom on the earth. A deadly commitment to God. And to the advancement of his kingdom on the earth. These are not guesswork. They are not stories. They are testimonies of scripture. Many years ago. October 3, 1984 to be precise. In Akaduna Church. We needed some 3,000 naira at that time to pay off whatever it was, uh, house rent, church facility rent, and it was very much, 3,000 naira. And so I called a few of our leaders and I said, now that we are all at the same level, I said, no, I first started by saying, we needed this amount of money to get rid of this bill that's approaching. I said, if I had this money, God will never appear to me to give it. I said, but now that we are all at the same level, understand what I'm saying. Because a time is coming when some of us will take off in the air. And you start more money. We don't even know what they're using. Let me tell you what I'm using before you start more money. I'm sold out to God. It was a proclamation, sir. Not an harassment. That those who are truly sold out to God today will stand out tomorrow. There, there, there is no, those who are truly sold out to God today must stand out tomorrow. Yes, God never lies. Any tiny mustard seed that is truly dedicated becomes a covering over the heads of many men and women on earth. It's not harassment. I'm sold out to God. You can choose to be sold out to God. God is not gaining anything from your dedication. You are the one profiting in every way out of it. What is the earth gaining from the mustard seed? The mustard seed is using the earth. He's using the earth without paying rent. Using the earth to grow and be meaningful. Using the earth to enlarge its cost. So it's not about God. I was no pastor. I wasn't called to ministry. Any child of God can choose to be dedicated. It doesn't matter what he does, he will stand out. It doesn't matter what he does. So if I was selling pure water, there is no way I would stand out. You can't be sold out to Jesus and not stand out in life. And the day the seed says, I don't need the art again, then it's over. His dominion is over. I don't need the art again, no. His dominion is over. The day your dedication stops is where your frustration begins. <laughs> so receive the grace for continuity today. Yeah. Receive the grace for continuity today. Yeah. 
truly dedicated people don't fear death. They are already dead. Paul said, I'm dead. My life is hidden. Christ with God. They are already dead. Dead don't fear. They fear in their soul. Um, this man has zero respect for death. You don't threaten a dead man with death. No. 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 No bolt of the air can threaten a planted seed. It's in the earth. I decree today the grace to make that choice in truth and in deed for every participant at Shiloh 2018. Dedication. Now, all the spiritual forces of dominion drawn from scriptures are living forces. What do I call them? And everything living grows. Everything living grows. We were told under the teaching of love that love is a growing virtue. He said that you may know the length, the breadth, and the depth, and the height of the love of God. So you might be filled with all the fullness. How much of his love you develop will determine how much of his fullness you are able to manifest. How? <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody was accosted by ritual killers in Port Accord. He just saw a phone or whatever and picked it. So maybe it fell from the person that was on the, you know, tricycle. And that was the last he knew. That was the last I found herself in the forest. And tied her with her baby by her side. And then they came to collect the baby from her. With the compassion of a woman. Wherever how, he threw a bag at the man. And Shiloh Flyer came out. And guess what? I was speaking in tongues from the paper. Oh, the ritual killers fell down. Oh. Everybody fell. My daughter took the knife by her side that they used to slaughter them and cut the rope for 17 others. They all walked into liberty. We are talking about fullness of God. What are we talking about? Theoretician not speaking, shout ye, shout me. And we're talking about the manifestation of the fullness of God. The man speaking from the paper. God is changing your level. You know where my confidence is? All my enemies know. My confidence is in God, in whom I'm engrafted. Me and God are at work 24 7, sir. God is breathing his breath inside me. Oh, my enemies look, they know. Touch this man, you see hell. Hell. Raw hell is not what are they talking about. Ask them. When they ask their mercy men, they say, You better be careful. Don't come near. To be full with the fullness of God in growing dimensions makes you a fear and a dread to all men that live on the earth. Thank you, Jesus. My prayer is that you will consciously make this choice today. And stop begging issues around your life. 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 Thank God for prayer and fasting. But you can't pray a seed into an harvest. It has to be sown. You are a seed. You don't know your true worth. 
until you are truly dedicated to God. You don't know your true worth until you are truly dedicated to God. We were having preparation prayers for Shiloh, and one of my sons here was leading in the prayer. I said, let's pray for mama, that God will perfect her health. I said, stop that. Pray for those who are coming in for Shiloh, that God will make their needs. Life is not a, is not a premonition. I said, stop that prayer, my friend. And let's pray for those who are coming for Shiloh, that God will meet everybody at the point of their needs. Father, Prodi, Shaga, Lebro, Tia, Neosata, Levi alone. God knows what to do. Amen. Now we are not talking theories here. Now, wait. I have never prayed for a house in my life. And you talk to God. When you meet him, ask him, has this your shouting boy ever prayed for money? Ask God. We have over 25,000 people on our payroll every month. Nobody has ever prayed to be paid. Oh, now you see, he said, be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise, not those who explain, those who obtain. Don't listen to explanators. You don't need them. Look for manifestations. Manifestators, those who are manifesting the reality of the truth of scripture. Talking about. You see, you see, you see. I've never called on any man in this great church in my life from the days of small beginnings. Can you help? On any subject, we've never gathered people together for any project in this ministry. Since inception, God is changing your story. Yeah. When your life and my life becomes a seed, our destiny becomes supernaturally fruitful. When your life and my life becomes a true seed, Planted unto God and to the plan and purpose of his kingdom on the earth, our life blossoms supernaturally. Supernatural. The wicked will see it and gnash with their teeth, but the desire of the wicked shall perish because of your root in God. No devil will harass your life anymore. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. At the root of dedication is love. And at the root of dominion is your proven love, which we call dedication. So it's from love to dedication. It's from dedication to dominion. Paul the apostle said, who shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sorrow? As it's written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these days, we are more than conquerors. Through Christ that loved us. If you love God, he will love you and will manifest himself to you. So his journey into dominion began with his heart for God. And then his heart for God led to his dedication for me to live his Christ and to die his gain. And then his dominion came, Jesus I know and Paul I know. That devil screamed, Jesus I know 
and next to Jesus is Paul. Jesus, I know, I'm Paul, I know. From love to dedication, from dedication to dominion. You can't preach the full gospel without Paul said. Two thoughts of the New Testament were written by the last of the apostles that came. <laughs> there is no way to present the gospel of Jesus without Jesus said and Paul said. Hmm? Now is the accepted time. Today is the observation. Who says that? Who says that? All that foundation can no man lay down which is lay, which is Christ Jesus. Who said that? Oh. His journey began from love and from love to uncheckered dedication and crucified with Christ. Galatians 2 20. Nevertheless, I leave. Yet not I, but it's Christ that lives in me. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. That's Paul. You see love coming in? That I preach because I have not to glory in. For woe is me if I preach not the gospel. One respected, anointed man of God said to me, David, Jesus hasn't called you to full-time ministry. I said, Jesus has called me. I had him by myself. My wife and I had him in high reputation till the day he departed to heaven. White man. And then uh, I said, Jesus, should I pretend not to have had you? See that I don't succeed in any other thing I do. Woe is me to pretend that I didn't hear you. Your love for God will always lead to dedication. We always culminate in dedication. We always culminate in dedication. One of our very beloved elders was concerned about our movement to Canaan land and said, what of the old people that cannot come and say they can go to any other church around them? Maybe our assignment and ministry to them is over. But as for we, have, I would rather sink with God than shine without him. That was a statement, sir. I would rather sink with God than shine without him. I would rather sink with God. Did we sink? Nobody ever since been genuinely dedicated to God. I once said that if my wife says she's not coming, it won't change it. I will be here. If all of you cry, ah, please, please, I will be here. You'll be crying there. I'll be here. Amen. I'll be here. God knows, the devil knows. Whatever God says suits me. My feelings notwithstanding. Whatever Jesus says suits my life. I pray that that will become your new lifestyle. Yeah. Can I tell you this? Your life will never experience stagnation and frustration again. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, it's important to mention here that love without proofs is fake love without proofs is fake the bible requires that we prove the sincerity of our love not by just saying it i speak not by commandment but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love second corinthians 8 8 we are required to prove the sincerity of our law. First John chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. My little children, 17, please start from 17. But whosoever has this was good and said his brother have need 
and shut out of the bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. In deed and in truth. In deed and in truth. That means it has to be validated. Let's look at a few things that are validate the sincerity of our love in the sight of God. Like we are told in John 21, numbers 15 to 17, the Bible says, Simon, do you love me? He said, I love you. Feed my lamb or go after my lamb. <laughs> Simon, do you love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my sheep or go after my sheep. Simon, do you love me? He said, you know all things. You know that, you know that, you know. He said, no, 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 it's not about grammar. Go and prove it. By your heart for my lamb and your heart for my sheep. Jesus said in John 10, 16, other sheep have I that are not of this fold. Them also must I go after and bring them. I must, I must bring them. I must bring them. So number one proof of your love for God is your love for lost souls. Your love for the souls of man that is in captivity. Your love to see people brought to Christ, brought out of crisis into Jesus. He asked the question three times. He said, threefold proof of your love. Your passion for souls is a threefold proof of your love. I can tell you this. When you are in love, you have natural delight to see souls saved. Natural delight, natural delight, natural delight to see souls saved. The reason Jesus came is to save souls. Matthew 1 21. He said, And he shall bring forth a son, shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He came primarily for the salvation of our souls. For our escape from the wickedness of this wicked world. And secure for us eternity. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number two, if you love him, you will love his word. Oh, how love I thy Lord. <laughs> it is my meditation all the day long. Psalm 119 verse 97. David the lover said, Oh, how love I the law. For Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. God validated the heart of David for him. He said, I found a man after my own heart. I sought me a man after my own heart. If you love him, you will love his word. Number three, if you love him, you will love his house. I was glad when they said to me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. You will love his house. Being in fellowship will be a way of life. You are not, mis you are, you are not trying to use your position to say that's why you are not there. All the other fellows who go to drinking bars, they are in the same class with you. They go there every day. Their service has no timing. They just sit down there. Service, service, service. The day is still young. It's only 2, 2 a.m. Service, service. He forgot his shoe there. Forgot his wristwatch there. Service, service. The devil will lessen his life. And then somebody else is saying, you know, by this, of, uh, you know, there are quite a number of things to do. The devil is trying to drag you away. The first American billionaire in history was not just a churchist. He was a steward in the church. John D. Rockefeller served as church warden three times. Three times. He was the wealthiest. He had all the responsibilities around him. He gave one forty million dollars at a time to the education fund of his church. Church warden is to go see the pastor, sir. Everything is okay. The doors are all shut. Can I be on my way home? Some people are 
have no status. They are just giving themselves status that does not exist. People who love Abraham was a business emperor. He had an army. Had what? God could reach him at any time, sir. At any time. So where are you? And who are you? Job was the biggest businessman. He was worshiping God every morning. Every morning, sir. Every morning. God cannot tempt some people with greatness, sir. They will abuse it. Because they are not anywhere, but they think they are everywhere. Hello, sir. Are you going to church? No, 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 no. We have, we have a lot of board meetings. And what? May you not have sickness meeting. You better run after God. Can I tell you this? You all don't have a future posing before God. You don't have a future. Somebody came out of the prison and saw me by the street ministry and stood and said, Will I waste my life like this? For this kind of man to be on the street, he must be saying something that is meaningful. He turned his life over to Christ. Use where God has given you to preach the gospel. Use it to prove the love of God to the world around you. So, any pastor who sits down there waiting for people to come, you'll be wasting your life. No church grows without a people on the go. And we are to be examples to the flock. No church grows without a people on the go. He said, go. He said, I see more room. He said, go again. No, I see more room. Go again. Go again. Luke chapter 14, verse 16, all the way to 23. Go again. May our love for God continue to be proved day and night. And may this love be in growing dimension. The good news today is this. You are living here with the rod of dedication. You are living here with the rod of dedication. Proof number three. If you love God, you will love people. You will love people. You will love people. First John chapter 4 verse 20 and 21. If a man say I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Verse 21, and this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, loveth his brother also. You love God, you will love his people, and you will love the people. When you see me shout down on the devil, on this altar, I'm not looking for anything. I hate fame. I don't need it. No. No. Every time people come up here and say, hey, thank God for the privilege Papa gave I, I, My spirit man is clinching. What type of privilege I give you? He gave you. This is so important, sir. of my country. I want them out of servitude and slavery and recolonization of the people by the people. I love liberty. I love development. I love advancement. That's why I'm crying. There is no political position I will ever, ever, ever consider till I die. You don't become a footballer at 60. No. No. So I'm not. I'm sorry. I don't see anybody in my own generation in it. We got a privileged priesthood from God. It's not organized, it's divinely orchestrated. Please. Anybody who truly loves God, loves people. I know as one that offers scholarship how many people can pay nothing. You can't lose 
lose your job, lose your car, and still be paying fees. Many problems are drawn out of school. And yet, some are carrying billions away every day, sir, in this country. And they are the ones to catch people, so they can't catch themselves. <laughs> Amen. That's where we are. Where we are. When you are dwelling in love, you are dwelling in God. Anybody calculating against you will just die shameful death. I love. Look, there will never be war in Nigeria. If it ever occurred, this man will be the last to leave this country until the last person died that cannot be helped. Where am I going to? All these looters. Their leg is outside. What and half leg is outside? Only half is here. Do they love their parents? Zero. They love their relations in the village? Zero. Myself, I, myself only. So they keep struggling in life. I love you so bad that I said to you, if God we not bless you. You should stop blessing me. That's how much you weigh my heart. And that's why God is blessing you. That's where the thing is. You love people to prove that you love God. You love people to prove that you love God. Thank you, Jesus. If you love God, you will give towards the advancement of his kingdom. David said, and now because of my affection, my affection, my affection to the house of my God, I have of my own proper good. You can't lack your proper good with an affection for God. You can't lack it. can't lack it. Every true lover is a tireless giver. Every true lover is a selfless giver. Every true, true lover is a delightsome kingdom promoter. Every true lover. Before I got the first bank account in my life, I desired in my heart, if I ever got blessed, I will build you churches, Jesus. Because I saw churches in the villages being built over 20 years. Three committees have died, new ones have come, church is not completed. And so the world humiliates us by saying as poor as church rat. And I said, Jesus, if I ever go blessed. And God began to bless. And I began to obey God and my vow. And I said, recently, Jesus, I want to build you a thousand churches in my lifetime. A thousand churches in my lifetime. Today, my wife and I build churches and furnish it and put sound system and walk away. Even the time to go and dedicate them is not there. I didn't have nothing when I said so. It was in the heart of my father, David, to build God a house. And God said, no, you won't build me a house. <laughs> But thou doest well because it was in your heart. I mean, you love God. You will give towards the cause of his kingdom. You are not waiting for applause. I'm not a philanthropist. I'm a kingdom promoter. No, don't mistake my life. I'm not a philanthropist. I'm not trying to show how much things God has granted me grace to possess. I'm just promoting this kingdom. You do it for any of these who have done it for me. So I'm on there. I have budget for, you know, health care for every year. Though I'm a healing you know, minister, I preach healing, I minister healing. People get healed, cancer destroyed and all that stuff. But in case somebody's faith can't assess it, let me lay some money aside so I can handle that. It's not 1 million, it's not 10 million, it's not 20 million, it's not 30 million. Connect. Love without proof is fake. 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 
Do you love God? Prove it by your love for souls. Prove it by your love for his house. Prove it by your love for his word. And prove it by your giving life to promoting his kingdom. Helping others. That was where the dominion of Job sprang up from. It was eyes to the blind, it was feet to the lame. The cause he knew not, he searched out. He plucked the victim out of the mouth of their devourers. And he became the greatest of all men in the East. Somebody's imagine from here. <laughs> Haven't you heard eyes have not seen, nor ears heard what God has prepared for them that love him? That is you. Yeah. The truth today is this. Dedication is not a gift. Dedication is a choice. He made himself of no reputation. He took upon himself the form of a servant. He became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. He did. He did. He chose to. No one took it from me. I lay it down by myself. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him. As we round up this morning, receive grace to make that choice. Receive grace to sustain that choice. Receive grace to grow that choice. Lift up your right hand where you are seated. Celebrate Jesus. You got something out of here? Thank him for it. He gave the word. He gave the word. Thank God for it. Celebrate God for it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Give the Lord a big clap offering, everybody. Just before we shut down in a few minutes, you are here in this hour of visitation at Shiloh 2018, and you are not born again yet. You want to turn your life over to Jesus? And become a candidate for dominion which begins with new birth. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world and overcomes by the instrumentality of faith. No one has an inheritance in the family to which he does not belong. It is salvation that makes you a member of the family of God, of the household of God. You are here this morning, you want to turn your life over to Jesus. You want to become a child of God. Somebody said, I don't know whether I'm saved or not. Then you are not. If you are saved, you will know. Wherever you are in this service and across the nations of the world where we are gathered this hour, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. Everyone that wants to turn his life over to Jesus, please stand. Please stand. Please stand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All of us that are outside here at Faith Tabernacle, you want to turn your life over to Christ, please stand. Stand right now. Stand right now. All across the nations of the world where we are gathered at this time, please stand. Stand. This is your chance for a change of story. Please stand. This is your chance for a change of story. God bless you. God bless you. There are also people here today that need to rededicate their life to Jesus. You want to reconnect back to God. Maybe you are once saved, but there was a disconnect at a point in your life. You want to reconnect back to God. Can I ask you to stand also? And I'll pray with you at the same time. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Have a brand new beginning? Please stand. Please stand. God bless you. Everybody standing, can I request that you please come up quickly? Come up quickly. Come up quickly. Let those that are outside come up quickly. Let the ones inside come up quickly. Come around the altar right now. In all the view centers around the world, please approach the altar area the pastors are waiting to receive us please go ahead there go ahead there this is your turn for a turn around it's your turn for a turn around whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world he overcomes by faith he overcomes by faith 
He overcomes by faith. He overcomes by faith. He overcomes by faith. He overcomes by faith. He must be born of God first before you can become an overcomer. You are never listed an overcomer until you are born again. Please come. Please come. Please come. Wherever you are, you are giving your life to Christ for the first time or you are dedicating your life to Christ, please come. Please come. Grace available here this morning to establish your dominion. Now, please listen to this. No matter how good the soil, can a dead seed grow? Can a dead seed grow? So the dedication of the unsaved has no value. Dedication of the unsaved has no value. No dead seed can grow. No dead seed can become a tree. No dead seed can have value. Please come. Whosoever has the Son of God has life. Whosoever has not the Son of God has not life. Please come. 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 You have what it takes to become a living seed. Come. Come. That will make dedication meaningful. Please come. Come. Wherever you are, come quickly. 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 Come and offer your life as a living sacrifice to God. Come and come and come. As you come, please start filling up your card very swiftly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Everybody here standing before the Lord and his altar all across our various centers around the world please bow your heads lift your right hands to heaven complete your forms after all and pray this prayer after me if you are coming stay on and join us say after me lord jesus i surrender my life to you today Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I am now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Sin has no more dominion over my life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray over you, Father. I pray over everyone standing before you today. Your grace has found them. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus. The enemy shall not be able to assess your life anymore. Grace to run this race to the end. Receive it now. Grace to live the overcomer's life. Receive it now. Grace to make heaven at the end of your journey. Receive it now. And so shall it be. You are blessed of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. 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 I have the life of God in me. I have the spirit of the Lord in me. I have the life of God in me. Come on now, sing that song as they made their way back to their city. I have Oh, 
of the Lord. I have the spirit of the Son of God. He is my And thank you for it. In Jesus precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise everybody. And please you may be seated. Let me again welcome every one of us into his presence. Welcome every one of us. To the feet of Jesus. Welcome every one of us to this mountain of fat things. A feast of wine on the leaves. A feast of wine on the leaves well refined. Of fat things full of marrow. And the Lord shall destroy upon this mountain. The face of the covenant cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations. It shall be a mountain of light. It will swallow up death and victory. The Lord will wipe away tears from off all faces and the reproach of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. That's Isaiah 25 and verse 6 to 8. No one will return with tears on his face. This shall be to every one of us a mountain of divine solutions. Everyone appointed to death will be fully liberated. That my son is a medical doctor himself and they told him you have six months more to leave. If you go to Nigeria, nobody can guarantee your return. You shouldn't fly at all. He came here with that dilapidated heart condition. And 2030 now, shame on the devil. Everyone appointed to death will return liberated. If that looks like you, let me hear your loudest amen. When I say Shiloh 2018, you will say, I have dominion. Amen. And I say, I have dominion. Then you reply and said, I take dominion at Shiloh 2018. It's one thing to have it, it's another thing to take it. Everybody is returned with the rod of dominion in their hand. Shiloh 2018. I have dominion. At Shiloh 2018. You know, he said, You shall have whatsoever you say. I take dominion at Shiloh 2018. I have it. Already given, but I am now here to take it, and I'm taking it back home. Whatever you take from here, we live with you for life. I saw a bore my sicknesses and carried my pains, himself took my sicknesses. And carried my pains. I saw it, did it, so I took it. And I took it July 79. And I'm still in command today. I have dominion over this body. This body responds to my authority. 
What I say to this body is what this body obeys. In the name of Jesus, whatever you truly take from this place, we live with you for life. Just before we get into the word, the Lord asked me to offer this warning to everyone on Shiloh ground and in all our various locations. Every prophetic gathering is a two-sided gathering. Behold, I lay before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. That thou and thy seed may live. If you will hearken to my word, I'm observed to do what I tell you to do. I said to on high above one nation, and all these blessings will come to you. But if you will not hearken to me, verse 14, all these causes will follow. Please make a choice for his blessings at Shiloh. His causes can be costly. For anyone who might have been an agent of the devil sent here, this is a dangerous place. Please don't ever tamper with anything that is not yours. Don't. Just like whatever the Lord doeth is forever. Whatever causes the Lord inflict is forever. Don't try. The Lord told me to warn you. Please be warned and choose the blessing. The causes can be very costly. Choose the, you know, it's the opening night. There is no report from anywhere, but God told me to warn you. And I'm warning everybody in every location where we are gathered. Don't toy with causes. For the cause of the Lord is in the house of the thief. And you consume it all together. The stones, the wood, the earth. Nothing will remain. Don't try it. Thank you, Jesus. Eroding the dominion era of the church. Is what we are looking at tonight. Eroding the dominion era of the church. The first thing we're looking at is what is dominion? In our context, dominion can be defined as being in control of the affairs of life. That was God's mandate for the man that he made. Let us make man in our own image. After our own likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. Over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And verse 28, and so the Lord made man. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over everything that moveth upon the earth. What is dominion? Is having it always the way you want it. For I'm a man under authority, I say to this go, it goes, and to that comes, it comes. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8 to 10. Speak the word only. He had it the way he wanted it. And the servant was made whole that same same hour. Having it the way you want it, always. 
That's dominion. What is dominion? Number three. Is being in command in one's field of endeavor. Being in command in one's field of endeavor. And we saw that. In the testimony of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego plus Daniel, they were ten times better than their colleagues. Daniel was referred above all other presidents in Babylon. Ben in command in one's field of endeavor. What is dominion? Having authority from on high to reign in life. Having authority from on high to reign in life. He has redeemed us as priests and kings out of every tribe. If you start from verse 19. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So there is no disadvantaged citizen on the earth. His redemption plan is universal, the effect is universal. So he has redeemed us unto our God as priests and kings, so we can reign on the earth. Out of every tongue, out of every kindred, out of every people, out of every nation. Out of every nation. So no disadvantaged nation. In Mark 11, 28 to 30, they were asking Jesus. By what authority dost thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered. I will also ask you one question and answer me. Then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Then he brought the question out. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. So the authority that enthrones us is from heaven. It's from where? It's not man-made, so it cannot be man-checked. It's from heaven. Authority from heaven. Authority from heaven to reign on the earth. Every child of God is a citizen of heaven. Philippians 3 verse 20. For our conversation or citizenship is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so we, we are heavenly citizens on a mission on the earth. And our mission is to have dominion over the earth. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 17, the Bible says, For by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. So we are enthroned to Jesus Christ to reign the earth. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. This is so important. In Psalm 110 verse 1. 
2 and 3, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. That means Jesus won't come until his enemies are made his footstool. He said, The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Zion means the church of Christ. Rule thou in the midst of the enemies. If you are in the last days and Jesus on his way coming, then the church of the last days is ordained to have dominion over the earth. The church is not a building. The church is a people. Every member of the body of Christ is ordained to have dominion on the earth. And in the name of Jesus, you will not be left out there. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. We serve the God of times and seasons who makes all things beautiful in his time. For everything, there's a time and a season. And in verse 11 of Ecclesiastes 3, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Let me speak this to all of us who are here, all the powerful sons and daughters of the prophet who are causing great waves in their respective ministries. We are not smarter than those before us. We are only called in this colorful time where God has ordained to elevate his church. We are not, we are not smarter. We are just privileged to be here in his time for doing what he's doing. The people we met in ministry were great prayer warriors, fasting as a lifestyle, seeking the face of God at every cost. I was coming in here tonight and I saw people um, in the car and then they have light. No, we were in the forest. No light. No water. You don't even think of water. God is doing what he's doing because it is his time to do it. Amen. I want all ministers give the Lord a big hand. It's not your smartness. It's not your greatness. Amen. He makes all things beautiful in his time. When God spoke about building this tabernacle, there was no gathering in this country that had 2,000 people. There was no gathering. This, there was no convention. Check history. That had 2,000 people. Where would they get it from? When you had 500 people in the service, I mean, in the convention, so the whole world came. The whole world came. I'll tell you what that was. There was no musical equipment anywhere. I mean, you just come and sing with your mouth and stamp with your feet and clap. What has brought all this beauty? God's timing. He makes all things beautiful in his time. So, it was his time to build this tabernacle. Then he built it. And he built it to fill it. You understand what I'm talking about? So, it's not about capacity. It's not about ability. It's about the beauty of his timing. He makes all things beautiful in his time. In his time. In his time. And I'm glad to let you know we are in the last days. We are in the times of the glorification of the church. We are in the time of the dominion of the church. We are in the time where God has just come down to manifest himself among his people. You will not be left out. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. He makes all things beautiful in his time. The end time church 
is ordained a reigning church. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above the mountains and exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And many people shall go and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways. We will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall proceed the law. Authority in the last day shall be domiciled in the church. Whether anybody is angry or happy, it doesn't change it. That is God's agenda for the last days. The law shall proceed out of Zion and the word of the law from Jerusalem. It's God's agenda. Only a fool stand before a 16 wheeler trailer and say, I won't let you go. It will grind you to nothing. Now, in the last days, and Peter stood up and said, this is that which was spoken that in the last days so last days began in the upper room Hallelujah. you cannot begin to imagine Hallelujah. what stage of the last days we are in Hallelujah. we are in the closing days of the last days we are in the closing days of the last days it's the law the law means authority and the word of the law so there are two different things revelation will be flowing like water like rushing fountain revelation like rushing fountain <laughs> and it shall engender men and women of authority rising in their numbers not people that came from somewhere and say you know where people that are made great by god yes yes yes, yes. no people can't tell where they're coming from people made great by god shall be domiciled in the church of the last days. Let all people, political you know, gladiators understand this truth. If the church says no, you can go nowhere. Did you see what the evangelicals did in America? If the church says no, you are wasting your time. Authority in the last days, in all fits. Shall be domiciled in the church. Amen. It is not by negotiation. It's a divine agenda. It can't be altered by man or group of people. Thank you, Jesus. Please be sensitive to the timings of God. Be sensitive to God's timings. You are in your season of enthronement. God is conferring authority upon your life at Shiloh 2018. God has determined to establish the dominion of the church in these last days. Psalm 81, 87 please, and verse 1 to 7. Very interesting picture. His foundation is upon his holy mountains. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Now, let me quickly do this. What is Zion? In Hebrews 12, 22 to 24, it says, But ye are come to Mount Zion. Unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, and what? To the general assembly, and church of the false born. So Zion is the church in prophecy. Zion is the church in prophecy. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. Amen. Oh yeah, I, I'm going to make mention of Rehab and Babylon to them that know me. They know. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia. This man was born there. He said, 
And of Zion shall be said, this and that man was born in her. And the highest himself shall establish her. The giants of this end time shall be domiciled in church. Giant in all feats of endeavors. Oh. Mm. The highest himself shall establish her. It's not something you organize. It's by the hand of the almighty God. By the hand of the almighty God. The same way Covenant University has left many Covenant universities in the West behind, many in the West, in the East, everyone behind. <laughs> you don't talk to nobody. The highest himself shall establish. Amen. Amen. Covenant is today within 3% of world leading universities. 3% globally. Amen. There are 29 plus universities in the world who are within the four 600. Covenant is within the first 600 out of 29,000. Man, you, you better wake up. We are in the last days. The highest himself is establishing his glory in the church. Many men will rise like nations. Many men will rise from this Shiloh that will be stronger than strong nations. Somebody excited? Come on, give the Lord praise, everyone. Dominion. That's God's agenda for the end time church. We are redeemed. Now, go ahead. Let, let's finish that chapter. Verse 6. The Lord shall count when he righted up the people. That this man was born there. <laughs> the most notable citizens of the earth shall be found in the church. And then, verse 7 as well as the singers, like you saw that my son giving testimony, as the players of instruments shall be there. All my springs shall be domiciled in Zion. How many of them? Science and technology, commerce, economy, all oh, my springs, all oh, my springs, not some, all oh, my springs. You can get angry if you want, it won't change it. You can be upset, that's very good for you. All oh, my springs, all oh, my springs, the largest. Highest employers of labor shall be found in the church. Amen. All my friends. There are those sitting down here today that they will number 100,000 people in your own organization. Amen. Oh, my friends. I am thee. Now, it's one thing to see it. It's another thing to receive it. Praise God. Now, now, this is how it works. What you see is great, but it has nothing to offer until it's received. You have found the seed, great, but until you sow the seed, it will abide alone. So you receive the seed into your mind, your fertile mind. Amen. And be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we receive it with our mind. Number three, we believe it with our heart. Number four, we declare with our mouth. Glory to God. Number five, you put to work what he says to do. Number six, you begin to walk in the consciousness of it. You begin to do what? Walk in the consciousness of it. Since the day I found that he will set me up above all nations of the earth if I would do what he says. I, there is nothing locally that moves me. I went above the localities. Hallelujah. 1984. Mm. Amen. 
and watch what is happening today. So please see, receive it in your mind, believe it with your heart. For with the heart, man, believe it unto righteousness. It didn't profit them not being mixed with faith in them, in them. You believe it in your heart. You believe it in your heart. You declare it with your mouth. With the heart, we believe with the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. Your position won't change until you declare it. Your position will not change until you declare what you have found. Your position will never change until you declare what you have found. God cannot confirm what you will not say. <laughs> it was confirming the world with signs following. You can't say it, you can't see it. And then put your part of the deal to work. Whatever it says to do to make that thing work, keep at it. And then, of course, the one you will always forget it, walking in the consciousness of it. I can't imagine me called sick. If you say it, you are wasting your mouth. You walk in the conscious. Look, look, because you have had so many things. Why are they not there with you? Because you don't know how to process it. This is the covenant process system. You see, you receive it in your mind. You believe it in your heart. You declare with your mouth. And then you put your part of it to work. What he says to do, you are doing it. Glory to God. And then you walk in the consciousness of it. For God is a God of knowledge by whom actions are weighed. First Samuel 2, 3. You walk in the consciousness of it. And then, number seven. Be assured that God's integrity is committed. Be assured. Be confident that God's integrity is committed to perform his word. That was the place where Abraham stood. Against hope, he believed in hope. They might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Even so shall they see it be. So, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Full, being fully persuaded, being fully, be assured. That is what will come to pass. We are redeemed to walk in dominion. Ephesians 5 and verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Have respect to the covenant of the Lord because the dark places of the earth, they are full of the habitations of cruelty. And the cheapest way to walk in the midst of darkness, to walk in dominion, is to be light. Because the dominion of light over darkness is instant and unquestionable. In the name of Jesus, every area of concern in your life, they are all the workings of the past of darkness. Now, with your consciousness of being a child of light, I see every power of darkness arrayed against your life dismantled tonight. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. You must take dominion from here over every area of concern in your life. God shall be confirming in these last days that the heavens do rule on the earth. God shall be confirming in these last days that the heavens do rule on the earth. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 25. I mean Daniel, sorry, Daniel 4, 25. That they shall drive thee from men, that is Daniel interpreting this dream to Nebuchadnezzar, that wicked king, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdoms of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he wills. 
verse 26. And they shall, and, and whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be shown to thee after that thou have known that the heavens do rule. Now, how does that apply to you? At redemption, we are raised up together with him. Ephesians 2, verse 6. And made to sit together with him in heavenly places. And that is located far above. All principles and powers. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And verse 22. And I put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. To the church. To the church. To the church. So we are heavenly rulers on the earth. Jesus has subjected all things under his feet for the church to reign on the earth. And that's where you are. From today, no more torture or afflictions of the powers of hell in your life. That was the secret of my authority that I found in 1979. That I'm seated far above. Sir, so I received it in my mind. Sure. I believed it with my mouth, with my heart. Yeah. I declare with my mouth. How many of you are witches here? Stand up. I'm seated far above you, amen. <laughs> I declared with my mouth, sir. I began to put it to work. Working in the course of it and being fully persuaded that that is the truth and nothing but the truth. From that time until now, all devils shiver when I stand. Hallelujah. Amen. Whether they are human devils or devil devils. <laughs> when I stand and I declare my authority, they take over. Hallelujah. I just, just process it for maximum impact on your life. You find it, you receive it with your mind, your mind your mind and then you believe it with your heart you declare it with your mouth you know i said yeah i can never be sick 1979 on the ogumba flood day that's the only way i know it praise god i came out from that thing and i i saw ogumba flood being announced or something you can't say boldly you have not believed heartily out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks on its own there is no go come you are not organizing it <laughs> oh, okay. this high blood pressure not me no, no. there are no premonition it's inside you out yes. of the abundance of the heart. the heart so let the word of god dwell richly in your heart hallelujah dwell richly in your heart. you'll be saying it naturally naturally I saw myself in a coffin one night and I replied in the sleep. I said, poor devil, is it not written? There is no wisdom, no cancer, no understanding the grave. Nobody sees himself in the coffin and stay there. <laughs> Dummy devil, get out! In the sleep, because your spirit man doesn't sleep. Whatever you believe in your heart is working even in the night. Yes. <laughs> I mean, a lion does not become a goat because he's sleeping. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. If 
Even the sleeping state of a lion scares other animals. He may not be sleeping. Oh. He may not be looking. Oh, 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 The lion is genuineness, you know, snoring. They say it's pretending. That just come near, he will eat your head fully. Amen. I say, even in the sleep. That's why I say, believe it in your heart. Yeah. Even in the sleep. Hallelujah. Even in the sleep. Somebody's breaking forth this time. If you just take that processing line on every truth that you ever find, forget the devil. For he upholds all things by the word of his power. That's where your dominion lies. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Well, the good news tonight is you are living here a changed man. The things you used to fear shall begin to fear you from now. God has determined to establish the dominion of the end time church and no one can disannul it. Isaiah 14 verse 24 He said The Lord of hosts has sworn saying Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. Verse 25. For the Lord of hosts, go to 25 please. That I will break the Assyrian in my land. Anything resisting your dominion on the earth, God shall break it. And upon my mountains, Tread them underfoot, then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from their shoulders. Verse 26. I said, This is the purpose that is purpose upon the whole earth, and this is their hand that is stretched upon all nations. Verse 27. For the Lord of hosts has purpose, and who shall is an only, and his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back. God has determined to establish the dominion of the end time church. Let every Assyrian beware. He will break your head for nothing. He will trample, trample you on their feet for nothing. A time comes when the church says, die, you die. Wrong man, you wrong man, sir. Some fellows meander to our old church in Lagos, and I said, Now I command them smitten with madness. Everyone that stepped there. First in the morning, they brought the first madman. I wanted to pray for him. It's a stop. You asked me to do it. God told me, You asked me to do it. Straight down with me, madness. First one, bow. Same day, same morning, another one, bam. Just to show that what I said you should do, it did. against any arrogant fellow who is puffing. You die for nothing. Die for nothing. You die for nothing. That's the authority of the end time church. It's not about clapping and dancing. It's that's the authority of the end time church. Africa shall be delivered. Amen. Nigeria shall be delivered. Yeah. Every occultic powers holding sway on the nations of Africa shall be messed up this year. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. According to biblical prophecy, churches like nations shall continue to rise in these last days. Yeah. 
And by saying, yeah, many strong nations shall come. Is it correct, chapter 8? You know why? Churches have become like nations. Yeah, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Churches like nations will rise. And the manifestations of God's glory among the church will humble the nations. Hey, Jack and Lobe, let's go there. Oh, it's working. These people know how to make it work. Let's go there. Let's go there and learn. Do you know something to the glory of God? Canaan land has never suffered power outage since 1999. 20 solid years. 20 solid years. And we are not with anybody living or dead. And nobody in this church is under any pressure, under heaven, no private consultation with anybody since inception till tomorrow. Yes, our church started 83, but our ministry started 81, May 24. Never had to borrow, to manage the little, to make it sufficient. Thank you. Never under pressure at any time. No spe specialist offering racer. No prophetic offering racing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you how things can work with dignity working with Jesus. Hey, hey, let me tell you this. Churches will become global peace setters. The doings of God in the church will humble the pride of the world. Amen. Let's go and find out. Let's go and find out how they're doing it. Why are the universities are the only ones working? Why are we not working? Hmm? Here we come. Why are they paying all their staff? No, but no delay. How are they doing it? Are we not in the same country? No, we are living in different realms. We are living in different realms. Glory to God. Glory to God. Something's breaking forth. In the name of Jesus, no one here will miss out of these glory waves. You shall not miss out of it in the name of Jesus. In the same vein, men and women like nations shall begin to rise in the body of Christ in these last days. Look at Abraham. I will make thee great and make thy name great. I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. Just chapter 13. By chapter 14, Abraham had an army. Abraham had what? An army. <laughs> when he heard that his brother-in-law was carried away captive, he put his army, 318. What was the population of the world at that time? Abraham had an army in chapter 14 and took on the army of another nation and conquered them and rescued his brother. And every child of God is the seed of Abraham. Men like nations are on their way rising. Men like nations are on their way rising. Men like nations are on their way rising. He said, by the revelation of the end time, a little one among us shall become a thousand. And a small one, what? A strong nation. Not just a nation, no. there are nations and there are strong nations. A strong nation. A G8 nation. Not a nation that is not sure whether it's a nation or not. <laughs> Amen. A strong nation. A little one. That is, personalities will be rising in the church that will be classified as strong nations. Their impact will be in many civilized nations. Amen. They will be sponsoring many events across the nations of the earth. Amen. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. So in case you are bothered about churches becoming like nations, now you better be more bothered. Because I know that under this apostolic covering, Amen. Amen. 
both those of us who are in the winner's family and those who are connected to it, you have minimum 100,000, I know. Amen. Men like nations Amen. that will rise from here. Amen. Somebody has seen it, but somebody has not received it. Have you received it? Yes, I said, God has ordained that to be listed as yes. one of the men like nations. Amen. Amen. You know, he said, not all men can receive this saying except to them that are given. You remember that in Matthew chapter 19, talking about marriage and divorce. He said, and he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom is given. There are many things you don't receive me because it's not, it's not given to you. <laughs> Amen. But I saw something that I will stir up jealousy through you. I saw it in my Bible many, many years ago. I received it. I believed it. I declared it. So when you think some people hate me, no, they are only jealous. They are jealous. They are only jealous. There, there is no hatred there. Why is he working for them all the time? All the time, all the time, all the time. All the time. They, are, they are only jealous. And I knew they would be jealous long time. When there was nothing to jealous around my life, I knew. Because I received the war. In my mind, when I found it, I believed it in my heart. I kept declaring it with my mouth. And I was saying to everybody, I was saying to everybody, but not all men could receive it. How can they be jealous of us? Why do they be jealous of us? Look at us, we are Nigerians. It's not <laughs> Glory to God. Now, I, I want to give the glory to God, but all the revival waves in America has not produced this crowd in all American history. I, I'm telling you the humble truth because I'm a, I, 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 I'm a, 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 you know, a student of Christian history. I did a lot of it. We didn't do this. He did it. But I'm saying that God is in respect of nations. Anything can happen to any man who we receive Believe, declare, put his part to war, walk in the question of it, and be assured, fully assured, fully assured yes, yes, yes. that is happening. That's your portion. <laughs> Tonight, God will stamp the seal of dominion on your forehead. <laughs> Say with me, I receive it. <laughs> in my mind. I believe this with my heart. I declare this with my mouth. I put my part of it to work. I keep working in the question of it. And I'm fully persuaded. It shall be delivered practically. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. The truth tonight is God is changing somebody's story. He said, And saviors shall come up from Mount Zion, that shall judge the mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. An army of saviors, global rescue agents, will begin to arise from the church of Christ. You believe you are one of the enemy are your loudest amen. As darkness continues to cover the earth and gross darkness the people, the, sh the church are going to manifest as the light of the world. Yeah, the light of the world. And the word is a word of darkness. Darkness shall cover the earth. Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3. And uh, gross darkness. People, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. His glory shall be seen upon thee. And uh, the Gentiles will come to your light. And their kings. And their kings. To the brightness of your rising.
I decree your unimpeded access to the light from heaven. In Isaiah 59 and verse 14 and 15, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off, for truth is falling in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a free. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Now, that is the state of the world today. You hardly can locate the truth anywhere. We live in a world of classical deceptions. All kind, all kind, all kind of things. All kind of things. But the church is the pillar and ground of truth. First Timothy 3 and verse 15. That is the place of the church in this end time. We are in a world of falsehood, lies, all kinds. We have plenty of that in our country here. Somebody tells you something, you better don't run with it. Don't. Don't. But the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. I tell you something, you won't find the truth anywhere now except in church. Yes. That will make people wrong to find God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Your oppression is over. Your affliction is over. Everything standing against your promised land clears off tonight. Clears off tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, where this is where dominion begins. Note that one cannot dominate in life, that one must dominate his life before he can dominate his world. Jesus became the first begotten of the Father, Hebrews 1 6, before he brought many other sons to glory. Until one is rescued, he cannot rescue others. Upon my there shall be deliverance, and then holiness and God shall possess their possession, verse 17, and then saviors will emerge. After being delivered, after possessing our possession, then they emerge as saviors to help others get across to theirs. We must be out to remove the beam in our eyes before looking for how to remove the moat in the eyes of other people. Mark chapter 7 and verse 3 to 6. This is where dominion begins. It begins with you dominating the issues of your life. I have this series of encounters that may help interpret this. 1979, I had an encounter with Ephesians 2, verse 6, and Ephesians. 1 20 and 21 that help reposition me with authority over principalities and powers. He was going to send me to liberate the world, so he had to liberate me first. Hello, you can't liberate nobody until you are liberated. 
You can't be in a pit. I want to get somebody out of that pit. You have to come out of that pit first. Amen. And one of the worst oppressions of the devil or the, is sickness and disease. Jesus went about doing good and healing them that were oppressed of the devil. So, in 79, through Kennedy against Materia, he connected me to, he took my infirmity and bore my sicknesses. He took, then he can be there. You know why? He was going to send me to heal the sick. He had to heal me first. You have to give me authority first. You have to dominate the issues of your life before you can dominate your world. You dominate first. You dominate. So on this mountain, can I tell you this? Nobody is permitted to return with any sickness or disease. Yeah. And you won't be coming and going for it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that my son now is 10 years or about Eight years now that he got free from that dilapidating heart condition and he's still jumping about and he's still here today. You, see, you, you have to dominate your issues to dominate your world. You have to dominate your issues to dominate your world. Jesus said, You will use this proverb to me. Physician, heal thyself. Say, Look at me. Look at me. Now, whatever remains to be dominated in your life is dominated tonight. <laughs> Stop considering anybody's opinion. Yes, yes, yes. Abraham considered not his own body, yes, yes, yes. which himself knows is as good as dead. Yes, yes. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He considered only the word. He considered what? Isaac came. Your Isaac must come. Your Isaac must come. Your Isaac must come. Every oppression of the devil must end in your life tonight. Now, wait a minute. Can you imagine the devil oppressing people in heaven? No. Now, where are you seated now? So, oppression of the devil is illegal where you are seated. It's illegal. Nightmares is illegal. Spirit husband, spirit wife is illegal. Amen. Spares and enchantment. Can you imagine them in heavenly places? Now, where are you seated now? Where are you seated now? Can you imagine terminal disease in heavenly places? Casual disease in heavenly places? Can you imagine pains and discomfort in heavenly places? Now, where are you seated? Those are illegal operations where you are seated. Where you are seated is a no-go area, no -go area for Satan's oppression. No it's a no-go no area. area. So you are free tonight. <laughs> now, let me tell you this. You can never dominate what you will not despise. You can never dominate what you will not despise. They were in a crusade in 1980, and then there was this madman that the madness came back on him. Amen. Because the devil went around and said, Well, I better go back to where I was before. And so he was in the camp with us. And so they called me and they said, We have a big problem here. They were using all their muscles to tie him down. Mm, no way, in Jesus' name. Yeah. When I came, I said, Leave him. Ah. I pointed one scripture at him. Jude verse 6. 
that the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he has reserved a lasting chains on that darkness on the judgment judgment of the great what are you doing here all the devils left you can't dominate what you don't despise you cannot dominate what you don't despise you cannot dominate what you don't despise. You despise by the word of God. Can I hear your amen? amen. amen. Oh, you have high blood pressure, not me. Check it, not necessary. Me and you checking what? I said, cannot have. Check what? It went to wherever I came from. I never know the medication, no name in my life. Never swallowed one. You can never dominate what you don't despise. You can never. There is nothing in a devil. All powers in heaven and on earth are already given to Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. When you remove all from anything, what remains? The devil has no power left with him, sir. What he has now is devices, wise, and tricks. Subtlety. That's what he has remaining. He doesn't have no power left with him. He doesn't have no power. He said, There is no power but of God. There is no power but of God. It's not less discussed. There is no power but of God. What do you mean? That's what I mean. There is no power. Tell every occultic man, There is no power but of God. Tell every witch, There is no power. And if you move your mouth, I cut it off. Yes, sir. There's no power of God. There is no power from of God, but, but of God. Please take that seriously. And tonight, when I say stamp on the devil and kick him, who says Somebody had been, you know, sickness today, sickness tomorrow, but he came into church in 2007 and had me say, I can never be sick. It was a healing month. He was bothered. He came again the following Sunday. He had me, I can never say, say well, even though I don't know scripture, me too, I can never be sick. <laughs> Amen. Now, he testified last Sunday. Last Sunday, this is the 11th year that he has not known any sickness. Come on, give the Lord praise. It's after he had me say that, he said, he began to study the war to find out where I found it from. He has stayed super healthy life for 11 years. I have one of our precious ones here, Edda Ogundikwe. Can you come, please? Edda Elizabeth Ogundikwe. She's an 80 year young girl. Amen. Please give this young lady a big hand. Amen. She is almost looking 40. Here she comes. 80 years young. Amen. Praise God. Come on, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Can't you see the beauty of the Lord? She celebrated her 80th in July. She celebrated her 80th year in July. Now, listen to me. For 19 years, she doesn't know how headache feels. In fact, the doctors that used to check her up, that she used to go to, came to look for her. I said, we have not been seeing you. 19 years, no sickness, no disease. Come on, give the Lord praise. Amen. Now, she is still serving in the crowd control unit. She is still serving. She is still serving in the crowd control unit where you need energy to move. At the age of 80 plus. When you are 80, you will look stronger. When you are 80, you will still be serving God.
Nobody is deceiving anybody here. This is 80 years, 19 years dominion over sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus, your dominion over sickness and disease is established today. Come on, give the Lord praise. Glory to God. Because your eyes have seen it, your mind has received it, and your heart has believed it, it will also happen to you. It will also happen to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One day the word of the Lord appeared to me. My son David, my prosperity plan is not a promise. It does not answer to prayers. It's not a promise. There's no respect for fasting. My prosperity plan is a covenant. Until your part is played, I am not committed. Man, I received it in my mind. I believed it in my heart. I declare with my mouth, yea, I can never be poor. I began to do what the covenant demands with utmost delight without anybody pushing me, without anybody admonishing me. I began to walk in the country. You can't make me think poor, no matter how hard you try. You can't. You can't. It just reconstructed my mentality. Glory to God. Being fully assured. I mean, the one thing that is tormenting the devil about my life now is, where is this man? Where is he getting it from? Go and ask God. Go and ask God. I don't share no booties from any government authority in my life. I have a clear conscience. I don't owe them nothing. Glory to God. Amen. But I'm blessed. I'm jealously blessed. Praise God. Now, can I tell you this? I'm rich. I'm dangerously wealthy. Glory to God. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The righteous shall see it and be glad. Whatever I wanted comes. That's what they call wealth. You have seen many things, but you have not received many. You need to receive this in your mind. According to scriptures, the lamb before many of us shall be like the garden of Eden. Why behind us will be desolate with others? Because you are a seed of Abraham. When you do the works of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham will start answering your life. No argument. Now, in the name of Jesus, the siege of poverty is over in your life today. The siege of poverty is over in your life today. That was 1982. That's how to take dominion over the affairs of your life. God tells you what's available and what to do to actualize them. You receive that in your mind. You believe it with your heart. You declare it with your mouth and you begin to put to work what it commands and you begin to walk in the consciousness of it then you can be fully assured there is no pressure that God will bring to pass what his word says he will bring to pass now let me come to this and it will help you 
1983, September 6. My son, you have two eyes. I said, yes, sir. Can you make one to look up and one to look down? And I tried it. That's where the woes of many Christians are. Their eyes are not single. They look to God in the morning, to some other hair pass in the night. He said, anytime you are looking onto man, never claim to be looking onto me. But if you will fix your eyes on me, you will never be ashamed. Shame must end in your life tonight. What do you do? Keep your eyes only on Jesus. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence coming my head. Keep your eyes. Psalm 34 verse 5. They looked unto him and they were lightened. And their face were no more ashamed. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Pastors, don't keep your eyes on members of the church. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't keep your eyes on your father in the faith. Keep your eyes on Jesus at work in him. Jesus is always there. Ever available. Always there. Ever dependable. Keep your eyes on Jesus. You never know shame. Oh, it's my mama who said I should come there. Eh? Your mama said you should drink acid. And you went ahead and drank from the age of 20, you are absolutely responsible for your actions according to scriptures. Absolutely. Numbers chapter 1, Numbers chapter 4. You are absolutely, from the age of 20, nobody's to blame for any step you take, sir. You only. You only. From the age of 20 and 30, you are just responsible. Your destiny is left in your hand. Amen. Amen. You know, the mother eagle keeps the eaglet for some time. That's the time they push them out of the net. Get out from here. Go and find your nest. Go and find your nest. Amen. Go and find your nest. The lions have their own gestation period or their own you know, time of preparation to disappear. After you get to this place, you go and find your own level. If you find food good, you don't find food, die. <laughs> so, so... I mean, so you are absolutely responsible, absolutely. Anything you add to Jesus will frustrate your life. Anything you add to Jesus. Anything you add. Because the sorrows of them that hate that are another God shall be multiplied. Shall be, you know, oppression makes the wise man foolish. Don't let your troubles push you to the devil. It will make your matter worse. It will make your matter worse. It will make your matter worse. God, I'm coming to Shiloh. If you don't do anything, I'm going to that have a list. Why don't you go today? What are you waiting for? Because he won't do anything. A double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. Let him not think he shall receive anything from God. May this one humble you. God doesn't need you and me for anything. We need him for everything. You go. God doesn't know. Because he say, I am that I am. You go, I am. You remain, I am. You disappear, I am. You insult me, I am. Hey, there is nothing you do that tampers with God. Now, what am I saying? If you will fix your eyes on Jesus or whatever issues are of concern to you at Shiloh, I can assure you, you will not return ashamed. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. I can assure you, you will not return ashamed. Now, this was some of the light that the Holy Ghost gave me access to to secure my dominion over my life. Can I hear you, amen? Yeah. I, think I have, I have unchecked dominion over this body. I went to a meeting one time, one of our uh, house fellowship, leadership meeting, and I said, can I have a restroom here to uh, ease myself? They said, no. And I said, go to, go to the tour. I said, no, I can't go there. Let's go to the meeting. We had the meeting for two hours, 15 minutes. I had to be reminded, but you wanted to go to the toilet the other time. After two hours, 15 minutes, I tell my body what to do. 
Amen. I tell my body what to do. Amen. Amen. I tell my body what to do. I decree that beginning from tonight, nothing will destroy your dominion over your body. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. We had one humbling testimony this year of a young child, a young person that passed on in Aochi. It's a student of Aochi University, Aochi Polytechnic. And then uh, they told the senior sister was a cell minister in Portacot Church. And so they went on with the house fellowship provider, started praying kingdom and one prayer. Somebody died. Oh Lord, grow your church. Oh Lord, move the people. Oh God, save the lost. Oh God, establish the saved. Somebody died. So in the morning, they sent the junior, the immediate senior brother to that one to go to the mortuary. He got to say, you are late. We have embalmed them 24 hours behind. You know the meaning of embalming? That means properly dead. <laughs> Amen. He got there. They said, okay, he said, just bring him out. I want to see him. So they brought him out of the cupboard. And he knelt by the dead. Jesus Christ is here. What did he say? Jesus Christ is here. Rise up. No sound, no voice. He said, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Bishop Oyedeko South, is here. He sat up. Is still up today. <laughs> dominion. Dominion. Can I tell you this? Death will be humiliated this end time. <laughs> Death will be humiliated this end time. <laughs> For the time coming when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Man. And that here shall leave. That young man just said, Jesus Christ is here. Rise up. I'm sure the nurses will be, what kind of person is this? Everybody gave their life to Christ. The dead came out after embalmment. No close case with God. Whatever came with you as a concern, that grave will be open here. And shall be open tonight. Now, this is the conclusion. Any truth that has been revealed to you tonight, which you have received in your mind and believed in your heart and will be unashamed to declare with your mouth openly and boldly and will begin to put to work what is demanded of you and we keep working the conscience of the same shall become a reality in your hand. That is what makes a difference. No matter who you are and where you are tonight, God's purpose for bringing you here shall begin to find expression from now. Finally, March 1984, I was concerned about the state of the church. So I began, four of us went into prayer and fasting. Why is this church not growing? Jesus. On the third day, he said, stand up and follow me. And I did. 
So I turned back now and I did, and he showed me a layer of thick darkness on the rooftop. He said, That is the blindfolding weapon the devil uses to misinterpret what I am doing in this church. Can I tell you something? Jesus is the one at work in every church. Every church where you see the finger of God day and night, Jesus is the one what? At work. So I stood there. He's like, he said, deal with it. Now, you foul spirit of darkness, get off that roof. There's a light that shines in darkness and that darkness cannot handle it. And I saw it rolled away like a, cap a carpet. Then he told me three other things to do. Immediately he saw me pastoring multiplied thousands. One Sunday in 1985, I was screaming on our Uja, uh, you know, one kind of public address system. And I said, don't think I'm mad. I'm speaking to thousands you cannot see. They are outside there. Come and say consciousness. When he told me what to do, and I gave myself to doing it, I began to walk in the consciousness of it. Now, no matter what church building we build here, people will be outside. No matter what, the Jesus concern. No matter, I saw them outside. I saw them outside. No matter what capacity of church we build, people will be outside. I pray. That you won't toy with any truth again in your life. And this Shiloh will mark the end of all stagnations and frustrations in your life. In Jesus' precious name. Now, this is how to dominate your world. It begins with dominating the issues of your life dominating the affairs of your life being in command of the happiness around your life that's where it begins that's where it begins that's where it begins the moment you see the littleness of the devil your fear is gone your fear, i don't have one iota of fear in my heart sir one one well, because the devil that causes fear is under my feet so where would the fear come from only one who has lost his mind is afraid of lizards in his house. Lizard can cause you fear. I have not been able to sleep yesterday, since yesterday because of the lizards. Lizard, no. You just take one stick and hit it and go to bed. Everything threatening your life comes to an end finally tonight. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest, amen. You know the good news? You won't smell failure again. You won't smell failure again. You won't suffer frustrations and stagnations again. Your dominion will be established in your field of endeavor. Wherever you are, you will be tops there. Wherever you are found, you'll be tops there. Wherever you are found, you'll be tops there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big clap offering, everybody. Now, this is the foundation to our dominion. It's called salvation. What is it? Whatever is born of God overcomes the world and it overcomes by the mercy of faith. But it must be born of God first. Dominion is part of our heritage in Christ. But one must be born again before he can have heritage with God. You can't have an inheritance in a family you don't belong to. And salvation is what makes anyone a member of God's own family. Yep, yep. And hear what he said in Daniel 7, 27. And all, and the kingdom and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. They shall be given to the redeemed of the Lord. Yep. 
He has redeemed us as priests and kings to reign on the earth. So until look, salvation is no makeup, it's an experience. Salvation is not an ideology, it's an experience. If any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. You are here tonight, wherever you are around the world. And you know that you know that you know that you know that you are not born again yet. This is your opportunity to be saved. I'll be 50 years in the faith next February. Amen. I have never checked on any devil for any assistance in my life. Any devil, whether professional prophets or something. I've never checked on any devil. Can you please help me, sir? Help me to see because I'm blind. I've never checked on, I've never sought any help from any other source but Jesus. Truly, new path makes you an overcomer. New path makes you an overcomer. New path makes you an overcomer. Please, wherever you are tonight, you want to give your life to Christ and you want to be born again, you want to have the overcomer's experience in life. You want to also enjoy the heritage of dominion in this wicked world. You want to live above all principles and powers and not the force that get people scared and threatened in life. Please stand wherever you are, want to pray with you. Across the nations of the earth, all view centers around the world, Please stand. God bless you. God, you want to give your life to Christ tonight? Please stand. Outside here, inside, please stand. All across the nations of the earth, please stand. You want to surrender your life to Jesus and live the overcomer's life? Please stand. Much more importantly, you secure eternity with Christ in heaven at the end of a glorious life on earth? Please stand. This is your chance for a change of story. This is your chance for a change of story. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Many more are standing up wherever you are. Please stand. Stand right now. Stand right now. It's your chance for a change of story. It's your chance for a change of story. Everybody standing, can I ask you, take your Bibles and your bags with you. Take it now, except you have somebody standing by who will help you to pick your bag. We are going to, I'm going to pray for you right in front here. And we'll be closing afterwards. Hallelujah. Everybody that's standing wherever you are, find your way to the front right now. Take your bag and your Bible with you and come straight down. Come straight down. Allow those from outside to come in, please. Allow them to come in. Allow them to come in. Thank you, Jesus. Please keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. This is your night of change. Step back. Step back. Step back. Step back here. Step back. Take one step. Let them move forward. Keep coming. Choir, would you please stand? Celebrate God as they are coming. We're a chosen generation, please. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Across all view centers around the world, keep going out towards the altar. The pastors are there waiting to receive you. We are praying at the same time from this point. Please move on now towards the altar. Everybody in all the view centers around the world, please move on now.
of Shiloh 2018, everybody give the Lord a big hand of praise. Please, everyone in front, bow your heads right now. Lift up your right hand to God as a sign of sur surrender. And pray this prayer of faith after me all over the world at this time. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I open my heart to you tonight. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now, I believe that my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm now a child of God. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them into your kingdom. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you tonight with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered in the day of his appearing. You are returning from Shiloh a brand new person. Living a brand new life. Glorifying God every step of your journey. Grace to serve him to the end is now upon your life. No turning back for you. In Jesus' precious name. Congratulations, congratulations. Congratulations. Please make sure you fill out your slip and pass them on to those church officials around with you and then begin to get back to your seat. Please carry on and celebrate Jesus as they go back to their seat. <laughs> 